Assalamu alaikum brothers, sisters and friends. Welcome to a new episode of the GDM show, the Global Dow Movement show. On today's show, we're here with brother Sabur Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum. Salam. How are you? Good. Okay, good. Excellent. So today's topic is Darwinian myths, right? So let's cover it. What are we going to look at today? In the previous shows, as you know, we covered science as an inductive method. So all of its conclusions are revisable. And we gave some examples of that. And then about examples how the tree of life, the web of life, and other aspects of Darwinian evolution is inductive. And yep. there's a lot of ikhtilaf, a lot of difference when it comes to evolutionary biologists on yep. this particular topic. Now today what we want to cover is something which again shows you the inductive nature of science and again shows you what um, the uh, biologist Henry Gree, the, the uh, senior editor of Nature, said about science. What he said is that all scientific conclusions are provisional, right. meaning they can change. But that's not what we get from Dawkins and Krauss and these other yeah. science popularizers. So what we're going to be going through is since 1975, there has been this fact which has been pumped all over the world. You will come across it in textbooks, maybe a documentary, museums, discussions, and all the time you'd hear about 99% similarity between humans and chimps. Yes, yeah. Now, that sounds very, uh, I mean, the first time you hear it, it's like, really? There's a 99% similarity between us and chimps? Because clearly there is a lot of difference between human beings and chimps. Yeah, I mean, they're climbing trees and we're going to space and discussing yeah, quantum but mechanics. But so. then again, the, it's, when you think of evolution, that's one of the first things that comes to mind. Because it's been, so, it's been popularized so much. Yep. You know, we're similar to chimps, our genetic makeup is almost exactly the same. We're just the same, we're just a 1% difference. And, you know, um, so th there's some serious problems here. Okay. And just just to give you a perspective on this, academics don't view this 99% similarity, which was found in 1975, and we're going to go over whether this is actually a fact in a minute, uh, as a proof of com common ancestry between us and chimps. And this is not something which they would take as something serious. Okay. So I'm just going to give you a quote from Elliot Sober. He's a philosopher of science. And in the Cambridge um, Evidence and Evolution, The Logic Behind Science, this is a book that, that they published. He says, however, if there was strong selection in each lineage for the traits that one observes, the expected degree of similarity would be about the same, regardless of whether the common ancestry or the separate ancestry hypothesis is true. Both of the following thoughts are therefore naive. Humans and chimps must share a common ancestor because they are so similar, and humans and mushrooms must have arisen independently because they are so different. Right. So this is page 296, 297. This is a very important book on the logic behind the science, the logic behind the popular 99%. You know, people go around wearing those shirts, you know, 99% yeah. chimp. These atheists wear these quite proudly, right? And what he's basically saying is, look, it doesn't prove that. I mean, uh, why people think it proves that? I mean, we have 90, according to the same method that was used in 1975 to show a 99% similarity between us and chimps, well, there's a 50% similarity between us and bananas. Yeah. Does that mean that we're, you know, genetically quite close to you them? You said cats were more closer. I mean, cats are 90%, yeah. uh, cows 80%. So, um, th if, if somebody was to take this seriously, then there would be some big issues because... According to the tree, which we've discussed in the previous shows, we're supposed to be quite close to the chimp. Right. So if we are very far from the bananas and very far from the cats and the cows, then why are, why are we so close yeah. in terms of that um, 80, I mean, 90? You could put it this way, that some of us came from cows, some from cats and some from chimps. That's a possibility, <laughs> looking, at, looking at what we're talking about now. You, you can make various sort of inferences, but really what's, what's really quite interesting is academics don't view it as... as uh, something really important. Now, here's the big shocker. That experiment that was done in 1975 by King and Wilson, that was using an extremely small <coughs> part of the DNA of the humans and the chimps and comparing them. A very small part. So, this is something which 
was shown around the world as if it's in fact <coughs> science, it's an absolute fact, when they, what they actually did was they only took a very small part of the DNA of the humans and the chimps and they said, look, there's a 99% correlation. Since then, we have discovered so much about DNA that this 1% now is treated by evolutionary academics as a myth. Okay, before you move on, just on that point. Yep. See, that's a very interesting point now, because on a popular lay level, the majority of the people, the way they understand it, they have understood this, is, correct me if I'm wrong, is that, well, look, our genetic makeup as a whole, in general, is 99 to 98% similar to chips. Yep. But what you're saying is that it wasn't based on the entire DNA. DNA. It was based on a specific segment or part of it. A very small part right. and since then we've actually discovered that the one yeah. percent is a completely misrepresentation of the facts right so, uh, so just as an analogy sorry yeah. i'm just trying to get this because this is a very important point right it, it, it could be said so I, with, with this analogy apply that someone can say you and me come from each other we're the same because we have bids and that's one part of us that's similar whereas the rest of us is different I rather put it the way the academics have put it, because okay. they put it in a much stronger term. I mean, they. Uh, this is what um, uh, was written by. This is what this is published in a science journal, and this is a, again a peer-reviewed science journal. We have these atheists who say, "Oh, you're using stuff that's not peer-reviewed. It's written by creationists." No, this is a science journal. You can go check it out for yourself. We'll have the links in the by the biologist John Cohen, and what he basically argues is that. Um, our DNA and chimp DNA is not 1% difference and the title of his paper is actually Relative Differences, the Myth of 1% So these are the individuals that found the, the similarities, is it? Or uh, no, 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 he, he quotes what the original paper okay. and the scientists that have been speaking about it since Now I'm just going to give you some very interesting uh, quotes from this actual paper which again, this is a, a public uh, science journal Anybody can go in there and access that information, you yep. just have to log in, right? So, for many, many years, the 1% difference served us well because it was unappreciated how similar we were, says Pascal Gunnerx, a zool zoologist at UC San Diego. Now it's totally clear that's more of a hindrance for understanding than a help. Now here's how human and chimp DNA is actually different. And again, this is from the paper. Human and chimp genomes differ markedly in chunks of missing DNA, extra genes, number of chromosomes and chromosome structure, altered connections in gene networks, indels, gene copy number, co-expressed genes. Now this is again according <coughs> to the same biologist Pascal Gunnerkst. Any quantification of humanness versus chimpness is hindered by what I just mentioned. And what he actually says is, there isn't one single way to express the genetic distance between two complicated living organisms. So we don't know enough to make a comparison between two living organisms in the animal kingdom, right. let alone humans and chimps right. and there's a huge difference when it comes to human beings and chimps in terms of all of the things that I just mentioned and it's basically according to him and other scientists it's all so difficult to even start the process mm. of making a comparison between two because it's like chalk and cheese yeah. their chromosomes are different uh, the chunks of missing like DNA the extra genes and there's so much difference so, between the two so what you're saying is that essentially we're more different in ways than we are similar well, no, I'm going to, not me, and this is according to the paper. Okay. Our differences are so big, yeah. we cannot, no we, th we can't actually quantify that at the moment. Okay. Now, this, this is actually the way the paper actually ends, and I'm quoting word by word what it says here. Could, re could researchers combine all of what's known and come up with a precise percentage difference between humans and chimpanzees? I don't think there's any way to calculate a number, says geneticist Savi Pabo, a chimp consortium member at the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology in Leitzburg, Germany. In the end, it's a political and social and cultural thing about how we see our differences. Yeah, that sums up. That's, that, that just sums everything up, right, I guess, at the end. I, what's really interesting is this 99% chimp myth is still being used. Yeah. is still taught in some textbooks and 
What's really shocking is this thing has gone all over the world and now it's going to be very difficult to actually reverse that process and go around telling everyone actually that 1% thing was a myth yeah. and we can't compare the two because it's like chalk and cheese. They're so different. Yeah. And uh, it's really shocking that... Because it's it, left the realms of science and it's gone it's, it's, in it, other places. It's, it's gone into the popular media. But anybody that is involved in evolutionary biology and has access to these journals, they'll be able to look up these references and actually see... There's a huge difference between humans and chimps, and anybody could have told. I mean, even if you were alive in 1975 when they were going around saying this is a fact, 99% difference between human Similarity. uh, similarities between humans and chimps, the your basic common sense would have told you these chimps are jumping around in trees, and human beings are going to space, discussing quantum mechanics, solving mathematical equations. There's a clear difference yeah. between the two, and. They were right if yeah. they were to use their common sense at the at the moment. And now, what's really sad is, um, a lot of people are misinformed. Yeah, and, and this is this is due to what we've been saying for a very long time. When you speak about scientific truths, scientific conclusions, you need to understand science can go through radical paradigm shifts because of the problem of induction, problem of empiricism, and that one set of data. You know, you come to a best conclusion, uh, best inference based upon that, but there are other inferences possible. Yeah. And also, new data can come which can totally change your picture, like yeah. what's happened with this 99% myth. Yeah. I think that sums it up really well. And that's just one of several myths, several myths that we will be covering in the upcoming shows in the couple of, next couple of weeks. We've got an evolution series as a playlist, so you can go through that and watch the previous videos that we mentioned earlier. Also, there's an amazing event coming this December, which is called Failed Hypotheses, right? And the link for that, to register to that event, will be in the description box. And at that event, we'll be covering this topic in much more detail, you know, looking, revisiting Darwinism and just, just seeing what it's, what, exactly what's going on, basically, what has been going on for several years. But more on that next week. For now, Jazakallah Khair for watching and stay tuned for the next show. Assalamu alaikum.